All right, in this video, we are comparing the FJ40, the green machine there to your left, with its successor. So the vehicle that Toyota Motor Corp came up with as a replacement in 1984 to the FJ40. So the FJ40, the longest running vehicle in Toyota's uh, lineup, still made to this day in some markets, not in Japan, but in some other licensed markets. And they say, for instance, there's a good article in Costa Rica at like 3,500 meters, or let's just say uh, over 10,000 feet, where it's very hilly, where it's even hard to stand on the inclines for a person, the FJ40 does the harvesting there. And they say it's the only vehicle that can be up there. So that says a lot. And obviously we all know the history and how great these trucks are. But what came next? Well, this is what came next. And I did a teaser in a previous video. So finally gonna unveil what's under here. And some people said, well, it's the FJ60 that is the successor to the FJ40. Or it's the FJ55. So I think all but one person got it right. So let's just take a, a look at the back of both these vehicles. So this is the green machine. Both are modified. Both are lifted with SOA, which is spring over axle. I'll show that in a second. But that might but that could give a better hint of what this is. And as far as springs over axle, that's what it is. So instead of these springs being underneath the axle as they are when they're manufactured, these are over, which gives you effectively a four inch lift. One of the number one ways to lift a car quickly, inexpensively, but then you gotta start doing some other changes because the geometry changes on the vehicle. Drive shaft angles, things like that. So, what do you say we get this unveiled? Let me put a pause and underneath the black car cover is all right, so it is the HZJ73. There's actually 70 series, so just like the, the FJ40 that's got the 45, the 43, like different models of it. There's about five different um, wheelbases models to the 70 series, this one being a 73. But this, many of you didn't guess it because you were thinking US market. And yes, in the US market, while the FJ40 was being sold, they also had the FJ55, so it was not a replacement, it was just the wagon or SUV version of the, um, you know, off-roading 4x4. And the FJ62 came out in 1980. It was not replacing the FJ40 because the FJ40 was still in production and they classify the 60 series as a wagon, not as a heavy duty. The 70 series started production in 1984, concurrent with the last year that they were building the FJ40 in most markets. Again, there's in the South American market, they still make this truck. So this was Toyota's replacement for heavy duty. So full axle, yes, I know the 60 has a full axle also, as well as the 80, but the 70 was not made to be luxurious. It's still heavy duty you know, missing creature comfort, so to speak, and did not make designation for the US market. Not that they didn't want to sell them in the US market. I think it didn't comply with some of the um, federal regulations for safety. So yeah, the 70 series. And I gotta say, although, you know, they say it's heavy duty, you know, to go in all terrains, right? Because they wanted to keep a heavy duty vehicle, just like the FJ40 reputation. But in this case, I find it to be super comfortable. I'll show you in a moment the, uh, there's springs in the seat. So the seat has suspension. I, I love it. This truck, this is diesel also. So as you know, in the US market, we did not get any diesel Land Cruisers. This one is diesel. So what are the differences? Now, of course, these are two heavily modified. This one also is SOA, which is springs over axle. So you can see the springs are above the axle. 
again giving it some major height both these are super tall this is my hand fully stretched I'm six feet tall and I can barely touch the top fully stretched out arm same thing with the green machine so on the uh, FJ well sorry the HZJ so the H designates the motor type that's diesel the F is for a gasoline version that's why it's FJ40 and this is HZJ or the B because um, they had the BJ40 or the BJ70 that's also diesel uh, this one 4.2 liter 135 horsepower but it pulls like a freight train it's just such a fun vehicle to drive so that um, spring over axle gives it a good four inch lift you can see tons of room and this one is just good looking I mean I, I've seen these I, I actually traded an FJ40 my red one if you've seen my videos and subscribe and by the way take this moment moment to subscribe if you like Land Cruisers that's all I do that's all I post is Land Cruisers and cool ones so hit that subscribe button and you'll be updated on other great line cruisers so on this one that winch is uh, it's a 19 uh, sorry 2018 but it's built on a you know older vintage design but this winch had to be converted to 24 volt because in Japan not only is it right hand drive as you can see the steering wheel there that's on the right hand side folks that makes it also super fun so we're coming in from the passenger side and this is the uh, FRP so it's the fiberglass top that's removable you can see the color coordinated roll cage inside there so I've yet to take that off I think it's a two-person job and it's a long job and for you 80 series Land Cruiser owners you'll notice the gear shift um, is the same so pretty cool has overdrive as needed and this truck will actually cruise 80 miles an hour at about 21 2200 rpm so it just cruises right along and in japan that's the uh, zx model as you can see that that's how they rate the the power of the engine is the 400 kg And then they put the Land Cruiser engraving onto those FRP tops. FRP. So the, I have aftermarket um, sliders on one side. The other side has the original because the uh, exhaust system is in the way. So we have to figure out a custom way to uh, install it. And I haven't quite figured out what I like better. The rock sliders, obviously that are going to be functional. Uh, or these but I think the rock sliders are gonna win out as I've discovered in this truck many times those rock sliders serve a purpose so on the FJ 40 this one like I said they are heavily modified so in the case of this FJ 40 it's got a um, Chevy Vortec 350 engine in it So that gives it plenty of power to turn those 40 inch tires, those Trepidors 40s. The uh, Godzilla, that's the name of this one, for obvious reasons, it's big and it's from Japan and it's just a beast. That has 37s on it. I don't think I put 40s on that, but 40s fit perfectly on this. But remember, when you're putting bigger wheels on, you're moving your axle. So here, things got moved forward. Uh, that's got an FJ62 axle in the front which uh, got extended by three inches. That's what a lot of guys in the uh, FJ40s do. And this has in the back, that's an FJ80 axle with locker. But instead of being electronic, and I get this asked a lot, I'll do a, I'll do a video specifically on this truck coming up soon. But out of the, all those shifters, you got your you know, two wheel drive, four wheel drive, your high low, that's to the right. Then you have your gear shifter and then that one in the middle low is uh, the manual locker for the rear diff so you can get it into lock position when you're crawling up some gnarly moguls loose rock or whatever the case may be 
but this one is uh, quite lifted as you can see and quite capable the clearance on both of these is pretty tremendous now some cool interesting notes as of 2021 worldwide Land Cruiser, so whether it's a 40, a 60, a 55, a 70, an 80 series, a 100 or 200, or now the 300 series, which we're not getting here in the US, we'll just get the LX uh, version of it. They've sold, well not including Lexus, let's put that out. Title Land Cruiser has have sold about 11 million worldwide, not in the US. The US has seen about three and a half percent of those sales, so let's say just below 400,000. So, and out of that 400,000, about 90,000 were 80 series, including Lexus. So 75 of the title Land Cruiser and 15,000 of the Lexus LX 450s. And then on the 100s and the 470s, I think you're looking close to 80,000 each. So the 40 paved the way. We never got the Godzilla version which is too bad it is a phenomenal truck i gotta say it's one of my favorite land cruisers to drive and i've driven many one of my favorites and i just find that diesel is just it's got more power than let's say the f the 2h engine for sure um because it's diesel so you got a lot of torque and it's better than the 3fe and the fj62 and also what the 91 92 80 series got by the way if you subscribe speaking of 80 series i got two of them that's a 1994 i have a video where i kind of describe the difference between 94 fzj and there's my 95 which just got fully fully built i'll have a video on that coming up soon because that just got done back from the shop with some new suspension and armor all around um so yeah, check that. Subscribe and you'll be notified. But the 70 series was in 84, 1984, the replacement to the FJ40. And they still make both of these today. Not in Japan, but again in other markets where they've licensed the manufacturing for them. Because again, in high altitudes, in you know, rough terrain, these are the go-to vehicles that are still working hard to this day. The, uh, that diesel engine, you can get a million miles out of that before any major, major rebuild. You'll do some repairs along the way, of course. This one, for you 100 series uh, owners, this Land Cruiser, let's go look at the dash real quick, does have diff locks. So electronic diff locks, so that button is going to look familiar to you 80 series owners that have the diff locks or some of the 98, 99, 100 series. But what I found interesting in the 100 series, they do not have a timing belt light. And this one does. So you'll see down here it says T-belt. So I imagine that light goes on when that timing belt becomes disconnected and becomes an issue. In fact, let me show you where that is. On the 100 series, it's uh, it's the labor getting to the timing belt. Here, it's right there. So again, being from Japan, this was done at 70,000 kilometers. This truck now has about 150 thousand kilometers so I will be due soon they say every 90,000 miles so I'll be due soon dual batteries and that's the diesel they have a turbo diesel so they did have a uh, do have a four-cylinder sorry for that loud noise they have a four-cylinder turbo but I prefer this non-turbo so you're not taxing you know the power of the engine I would not put a turbo on this I don't think it needs it it's not like it's in a zero to 60 race, but the 4.2 liter six cylinder diesel to me is just, uh, and I've heard the best engine uh, Toyota has ever come out with, I guess on the diesel side of things. I have a 200 series and a 570. I gotta admit for the gas powered, that engine at 383 horsepower is phenomenal. 
So this one again, like I said, has a V8 in it. We'll take a look. And I'll be posting a video on this FJ40 soon because I've done a lot of things since I first got it. All right, so let's get in there and take a look. So fuel injection because you don't want to have a carb when you're rock climbing when you're on inclines. So you want fuel injection and you want the, uh, the power steering assistance there. The PSC systems and what this has. But this gets the job done. I got to say, and, I, and both these trucks, even though they're heavily modified, I did want to keep leaf springs for that traditional look. A lot of people put coilovers, uh, you know, if they're rock climbing. But believe it or not, I broke a shock once. It came, it came undone because it got overstretched. I guess just hit its limit, broke, and I really couldn't even notice because the leaf springs just, they just do their job. The flex that this gives, this has actually FJ55 leaf springs because when you're gonna be off-roading, if you notice, there's not much um, curve to them. They're almost flat and you need that to get all your flex. So. If that's what's interesting. You, when someone with an FJ55 is about to throw away their leaf springs, you say, hey man, can I give you 50 bucks for those? And they are, they are gold in this truck. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to show on this truck is the, uh, no, I'm going to go to the other side, is the suspension in the seats because they considered this, and maybe because it's got 37 inch tires and it's lifted, those tires actually kind of act as a little bit of suspension, giving you a lot, of, a lot of rubber, a lot of air. But, there we go. See in there? Those springs, that's <laughs> there for the seat. So when you hit like a, you know, again, this truck is not meant for being on paved roads. Mm -hmm. and, Know, cushy smooth roads obviously any car is going to drive smooth on a smooth road this is meant for horrible roads off the beaten path and when you hit a massive bump in the road dip you go flying in the truck well with those seats they have suspension with those coils so believe it or not you, you dip down a couple inches and it keeps you a lot more steady when you're in this truck so both of these Super fun to drive for different reasons. Um, as far as capability, I'd have to say this. You know, an 80 series, it's a wagon. It's bigger. And it's they, they categorize it as a wagon. So the 100, the, the 80, the 200, they call it a wagon. These they call heavy duty. So it's, it's medium duty to heavy duty. So wheelbase wise, I'd say for off-roading, the 70 series, is a great wheelbase compared to the 100. Um, this 40, well obviously it's not as easy to camp in. Yeah, you can bring your tent, you're not gonna put anything up top, um, and you have a lot less storage for overlanding, but for rock climbing, I mean, this can't be beat, but it's because it's overbuilt. But even an OEM FJ40 to an OEM 70, I'd, see, I'd say they're comparable because again, this is the successor. This is the vehicle here that was built to replace the 40 series. But you know, in any off-roading overlanding situation, you wanna be triple locked, meaning locking your center, your front and your rear differential. That's why you'll see an 80 series go for more that's got the lockers on it and that's when people are selling them that's the number one question does it have lockers dude you know can you can you take a picture of the dash you want to see if it's got the lockers that's huge otherwise you're gonna to have to spend thousands of dollars to put an arb uh, air lockers in and i think e-lockers trumps the um, air lockers all day long for instance that truck arb air lockers because it came without them this one, it's got the e-lockers. So just turn of a switch, pretty phenomenal. 
and some people that had the e-locker because maybe it only came and I'm just throwing a guesstimate in about 30 to 35 percent of 80 series so two-thirds did not have the uh, e-locker I should say did not come with the e-locker dial so a lot of people that have them in there aren't don't even realize it because when people were buying these trucks they were expensive back in the day they're equivalent to like 80 to 90 thousand in today's dollars so I think that one fully loaded in 95 was about 50,000 bucks um, so in today's dollars more like 80 to 90 so people were not off-roading with them back then but when the prices dropped and people realized what these things are capable of with their solid axles front and rear and with lockers especially that's when uh, you know the overlander guys started picking them up and as you know since COVID prices have just soared but there you have it. Subscribe. I'll have individual videos on each of these vehicles going into a little bit more detail if you are looking for one. There's some importer guys for these 70 series. My guess is these are going to become more and more popular because lots have been made worldwide. And the 25 year rule means you can start importing, you know, 1996, 1997 soon. So 25 years. The only thing is. California, you're going to have to register outside of the state. California does not want these. They'll send you to CARB and they'll tell you to put a $10,000, you know, carbon catching system on your exhaust. And that's just not worth it. But to me, this truck, you know, in, in all other states in the U.S., uh, you'll be able to import it. And there's some companies that specialize in it. So, and in this case, you know, the difference maker is on Godzilla, is that lift, is that front bar. It just, it almost looks like it's a classic, but also clean and modern at the same time. And believe it or not, probably get as many thumbs up, if not more, in that 70 series than the 40 series. It's just people, they, they've just never really seen this truck. We never got them, unfortunately, but now we can get them. We can import them. All right, so thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions, I respond, so just put them in the comments below. Like, you know, if you like the video, if you like Land Cruisers, hit that like button. Um, that helps the video stay relevant in YouTube. And uh, Green Machine, I'll have a video on that. Godzilla, got a video on that coming up. That's Otis. Now that one I didn't name when I bought that truck. The guy said, uh, let me take a picture of Otis with my daughters. I'm like, Otis? So then I just figured out an acronym. So it's over terrain in style. But I'll do a video because that one is a fully built, like pretty much everything you can do to an 80 series. And this one's going to be for sale. So coming up here in the next week. All right. So happy trails. And uh, hit that subscribe, and I'll come up with some other good Land Cruiser content. All right, peace out.